Here I am on my way to photograph the Huntington Towpath Century Ride. It's a two-day ride and it raises money for the Ohio and Erie Canalway Coalition. I'm gonna ride the Century today and also do the second part tomorrow with the people doing it in two days so I could get as much photography for the event as possible. It's really early for me on a Saturday and of course I'm riding to the ride. But um, yeah, it should be a fun day. I'm excited for it. Hopefully I could catch the riders and get good photos. So the camera I brought with me was my 5D Mark IV and I had the 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 on it. I figured I wanted that ultra wide angle for when I was passing other riders at a close range. I carried it on my rear rack in the bag I use for when I tour, but I hate the idea of my expensive camera and lens bouncing around in the rear bag, so a while ago I had come up with an idea. I photographed this um, material called sorbethane for a company and it's mainly used in shoe insoles, but it's also used to um, pad the instruments in the International Space Station, and I have some yoga pads they are trying to market that they made out of the material. So I put those in the bottom of the bag, and I figured if it's good enough for the instruments in the International Space Station, it should be good enough for my camera. So it's a great way to protect the camera but not have to have it on my body, and it's very easy for me to reach back and pull it out of the bag when I need to. The reason I wanted the camera to be accessible like that is because I was also a rider in the ride, so I didn't want to constantly be stopping to get photos and pulling over. I did a little more of that on the second day, but I was shooting a lot of the event from my bike. Also, I'm not usually an action photographer, but the 5D Mark IV does set up pretty good for sports. The high frame rate mode is plenty for me, um, so I can just hold down the shutter button and it fires off a bunch of shots really fast. And for even a cyclist coming in the opposite direction when I was riding, it was enough photos for me to pick the best images, you know, the smiling faces or get the person when they were waving. I was also using the servo mode, which is the continuous autofocus mode, something I rarely do. I usually just, you know, pick up the focus point and half press on the button and then take the photo. This, you hold the button down halfway and it constantly focuses. And my hit rate was very high. I only missed a couple of the images and that's because I realized I was just using the center point and so I broadened it out to like a bigger area in the center of the frame to make sure I could catch the action because I wasn't always looking through the viewfinder. I would just be holding the camera up or holding it behind me since I do have to be looking ahead and see where I'm going. I definitely impressed a lot of people out there by my one-handed riding ability. So for the towpath century, there's two ways you can do it. You could ride the entire century on day one, which I did ride the whole century on day one, or you can do it, which is a split that I think comes out to 69 miles on day one and 31 on day two or something close to that. I also rode on the second day because I wanted to get photographs of that. The second day though, when I woke up, it was pouring rain and they actually delayed the start time. And with me being a little more nervous about maybe it would rain again, I actually brought my 60 with my 40 millimeter pancake lens, which is, what I usually use when I'm just riding with friends. And with that, in that case, I just put that into my frame bag and didn't bring the rear rack. And I also rode my Roger Rivieri, which has 38 millimeter tires instead of my truck 500, which I rode on day one with the 32 millimeter tires. I also have more tread on those 38, so I just figured it'd be better for a wet tow path. To be able to hold the event in these COVID times, what they had done is they staggered the start and they told people not to ride in groups of more than 10 for lunch and the water stops. They had it all set up for just one-way traffic so everyone wouldn't be congregating. To me, it worked out really well, but I've never done the Towpass Century before. I've done their 50-mile fundraiser event. So to me, I wasn't, you know, I guess I wasn't aware of maybe what I was missing out, you know, on. I think we're all, you know, a little bummed to be missing out on more social type events. But in general, for me, I'm not used to what they would maybe do at an after party or if people do congregate around lunch. I got to assume it spreads out pretty much anyways, even in a normal year, because the way, you know, on a hundred mile ride is going to be. But anyways, I still enjoyed it and had a good time. The food was good. The water stops were good. The snacks were good. So yeah, as a rider and photographer, I was really happy with the event. So I hope the organization was. I know they did a good job of raising a bunch of money. Some riders did choose to ride it virtually, so they went out and did the ride on their own instead of showing up on this day. But 
um, I can imagine there's some people who aren't comfortable around anyone at all, but they really did do a good job of limiting how many people were interacting with each other and all the staff had plenty of PPE and all that kind of stuff. So I had a great time riding and photographing. I think the photographs came out great. I also shot some video for them, which I'm gonna edit together into like a one or two minute highlight video. I shot um, almost all the clips in slow motion with my GoPro. That way, as I was passing people, it wouldn't just be the split second of them. I could actually slow it down so you could see people's faces in the waves. I haven't gotten into editing that, but some of the footage that will be in that video is the stuff I'm using for this as well. So I tried to mix it up. But yeah, it was a great time and I get to do photography and bike riding again next weekend as the Ohio and Erie Canalway Coalition is having their Towpath 50 event, which is kind of a lower barrier to entry dollar wise, fundraising wise. So trying to get a little more people involved. That one usually, again, has like a fun after party and all that, but it's going to be a, you know, same thing where you have to deal with COVID times and that's just how it goes. 